Good morning, everybody. I think I, it's, it's becoming pretty different this time. After stand-up comedian, I'm a little bit more on the sober number side to, um, to run you a little bit through uh, logic of ecosystems and why is a great time to now re first time think about uh, European ecosystem. So let's see how that works. So how does this work? So look, so it's all about ecosystems. And historically, when I was discussing with European politicians, the, since 15 years, there's one thing always in common. You always underestimate the size of the ecosystem and the size and the importance of tech for an ecosystem. So when you look at um, and the US, these are the companies that have been, fi that's, that have been financed with VC for money. And um, so this sucks. Okay, so when you look at the um, ecosystem <laughs> in, um, in the US, since 1995, the US invested $870 billion into the uh, tech industry. And what has come out of that? Out of that has come 6.7 billion, a trillion in market cap, which is 34% of the GDP in the US. It is 2 billion of revenues, these companies, which is 11% of GDP. Uh, and it is 131 billion in R&D spent, which is 44%. So you could say over a short period of time of 23 years, VC investments have had a significant impact on the US economy. Yeah, so it's nothing new for you guys in Israel because you invented this whole thing. Um, but I, it is interesting to see how that influenced because normally Europe has a time delay of some, some years and then is mimicking all exactly the same what has happened there. So what that, does it mean for Europe? So for Europe it means, so we have been sleeping all in the 2000s. You can see that from 2007 to 2012, there were only 10 companies became 10 digit. And after that, nearly every year, 10 companies became 10 digit. So the flywheel has started to really work. The second thing which is very important, um, <clears throat> it is from all kind of different geos. And all the different geos might, uh, it's important to understand, do have different focal points. So UK is a lot of fintech. Germany is a lot about INT, mobility, those, and, and execution models. Sweden is about beauty and haptic. So there is a very rich and diverse uh, uh, hub ecosystem. Important here is Europe has finally closed the loop of getting money back into the ecosystem. So it took very long to create own exits, starting with Skype, but they were all small relative. So now they are really starting to accelerate, and not only do you have more, you also have bigger ones which is important. So money flows back to the LPs this way, and then the LP money gets back into VCs, and so we keep on going. Uh, <clears throat> so same is valid for the companies as such. Whereas in the 2000s, we have tried to build global e-commerce companies yeah, with 10 million investment and wondered why it didn't work. So finally, we, we learned the lesson that if you want to build great companies, you seriously need to invest money. So my perception is the money is there now in the early stage part, thanks to EIF, and the money will start to heavily flow into the ecosystem from next year onward, because now every government is heavily working on facilitating that. Um, it took them three years, the reaction time, but now I think they, they start to do the regulatory uh, pre <coughs> prerequisites. So, um, interestingly, so when on the super return, you could see that the big uh, people like Adam Street that run numbers, they said the last four quarters or five quarters, European VC was not worse than US one because you had a lot of VCs, uh, exits, uh, and mostly out of Europe this year um, that drove the returns. So also you can see that here in Series C and Series D rounds, the valuations 
are, uh, have, have caught up. That is very important for you entrepreneurs because that is finally deciding how much dilution you're going to bear. So um, quickly summing it up, five reasons why we go to Europe. So Europe in total is bigger. So there has always been the heterogeneity which served as a the breakage point so for, for proliferation. It didn't uh, expand that fast. So this is, has become better now on the B2C side because you have the platforms and the B2B side because everybody from supervisory board to CEO to digital officer, everybody is really focusing on that now, meaning that mainly B2B companies that originate out of, out of Israel have now a very, very fertile hunting ground in, in Europe with sales cycle should seriously be shorter. And we saw that already that they basically um, are less than, than a third now of what they used to be. Um, less, tr less distance. Um, so for us, um, <clears throat> uh, we believe in our split offices that being closer to each other helps you being closer to your customers, being closer to your subsidiaries, um, and that is an advantage. Um, we have been, as you know, especially from here and from the US, there has been a very, very regular interchange between uh, the ecosystem and the universities that barely happened in, in Europe, um, up till now. But that has changed last year. We have started a program with these kind of schools here, and they are suddenly all interested in linking up to the ecosystem. And there's one thing which you need to be, be aware of. The, the European universities, they are really, really good in not being able to sell themselves. Uh, for a very simple reason. In the US, you basically live from al alumni money, so you need to market the achievements in order to get alumni money. In the Europe, they are all state financed. So 1st of January, cashing, money in the bank, you don't need to talk about good things that you do, and that's why nobody knows it. If you go to these universities, there's a great deal of, of expertise there. Um, building up um, uh, infrastructure for your own company, salary uh, delta is still huge. And here again, this is the biggest thing currently um, for us in the EU. I do believe that a lot of helping that a VC should do if you come to Europe, and we spoke with several companies here, there's a big deal on fintech, on mobility, on health tech, that if you grow to a certain size, you will hit regulatory frameworks. And um, there's this saying that the US innovates, the Chinese copy, and the Europeans regulate. So we, we listened to that and finally um, uh, took that into account and are since two or three years very heavily involved with the regulators so that we have very direct lines to these regulatory efforts in order to help our companies. So, <clears throat> in a nutshell, ecosystem has really, really progressed. We have substantial exits, which is um, the, the key to make the flywheel going. Um, huge markets, European is closer, everybody is willing to push that forward now. So, whenever somebody is willing from Israel to come to Europe, we uh, would be delighted if we could help on that end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Klaus.